Welcome to the sports show. A lot to talk about. Mike, Max, Pat Gracie, Lou Nanny, and Sid Hartman. Sidney, how are you tonight? Not very good. Uh, when you see what happened down at uh, Orlando. Tough Ooh, day, tough man, night. You wonder about uh, the safety in the United States. That guy, boy, he must be something. Well, but not that, anymore. They got him too, but it was a But the FBI... I can't understand. They're supposed to be the greatest. And they investigated the guy in 213, and they investigated him in 214, and they let him go both times. I know. There'll be a lot, a lot of conversation about that in the days and weeks to come, for sure. Conversation? I never seen CBS in my life do something second to a war. Unfortunately, we've had to do it about 20 times in the last five years. So. Well, that night before in Orlando, that singer was shot, and he thought that was going to yeah, be a headline for so exactly. long. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's get to the lighter stuff. The Minnesota Twins are more disheveled than your haircut. <laughs> they won today. They did. That was a, that was was a night. 0-2 oh, when Kepler hits the ball that far. That for the kid. But before they lost, they made two bad plays that almost cost them the game. A bad throw to the second base, a, a bad throw on the seal. But I'm glad for that kid that he uh, hit Max the, Kepler. Yeah, he hit Because the, the two nights before were not good, Patrick. Oh, they, what, they gave up 15? And yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, their pitching just turned into a complete train wreck. And uh, somebody keeps, I keep getting these notes from people saying, it's the, it's the attitude. Nobody cares. I said, no, it's pitching. Fielding, hitting, and base running. That's the problem. It's not attitude. If you're not good enough, you know, you're not good enough. And uh, uh, they're 19 and 43 with 100 games left. And they got to win 41 of the last 100 to tie the worst team in franchise history. If they don't win 41, they're officially the worst team in franchise history. What was the... What was the uh, yeah, 16, 102 in uh, 1982 when they had all those rookies. Well, that's rookies, what the record yeah. was, huh? Yeah. Louis? You would think Thanks, he'd be able to win 41. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't think so, Louis. <laughs> I've been watching them closer than you have. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel uh, sorry for them that they... Coming out of training camp, there were so many expectations, and... and Many times you're not going to meet expectations, but you don't want to perform as badly, and it's unfortunate they're going to have to find a way to to do a lot of things to get this thing turned around because it's not easy when you're when you're that far away. Even if they were to end up, say, winning 15 of the last 20 games, usually at the end of the season, teams that aren't so good they they go on a run at yeah, the end right. of the season when it means nothing, and, and they come back and say, "Well, wait till next year we're yeah, ready." Yeah. I don't think they can go into a 20 game winning streak at the end of the year. Right. People are going to say that. That's because they're going to expect things to change, and if it doesn't change, they're going to be upset. The one thing I'll say is that watching that Bogarts for three days, woo, is he fun to watch. Oh, they got wow. Mookie bets, too. Huh? They run, they're athletic at Boston. Yeah. Um, uh, Kelly always says pitching wins. If you don't have pitching, you're not going to win. Again, the, the they inside got three of your pitchers. show never ceases to amaze me. You're saying that pitching is an important part of baseball. Oh, the most important okay. thing. I just wanted to make sure that was all the other goal stuff is important, too. Yep, just that goal. But if you, don't, if you can't pitch, you're not going to win. And they got, they got three pitchers getting $100 million or so. Who aren't worth a darn. Now, in the draft, they drafted high school kids the first four that's rounds. What I can't did did that surprise you, or do you think that's just a matter you of. It shocked me because there must be some college pitchers out there who might have a chance, like Eddie Bain years ago. Came right out of college. But that didn't Sid, work so well. Sid, what, the, what, what are a couple of college pitchers going to do? When you're 19 and 43, I you think gotta, you're, I think you're you just talking draft, in the next couple of years. Uh, it's the same as the hockey draft. You got to draft for Who the you think future. Yes. Who's got the biggest upside, right? Yes. You're definitely yes. going to pick the best player if you're if you're really wanting to set your team up to be good for a long time. You got to get the best players every chance you get. Does it matter? Does it matter about the I age. mean, the fact that you see them for a couple more years in college does that tell you more about one as opposed to trying to forecast the upside of a high school kid? That definitely helps. But unfortunately, if you wait that long, you're passing somebody that you thought very highly of that could prove to be 
just what you thought to be. And if you're passing them because someone showed you something else uh, two years older, uh, you're making a mistake. I mean, that's why that's why in hockey you never see, very seldom you will you see a 20-year-old drafted. They're always 18 yeah. and maybe 19. Juniors. They the third the year, upside, right? Yeah, they, they're going to take they the upside. They invite pros. Yeah. Hockey invite pros. The juniors are pros, aren't they? Well, no, they're not pros. They're that's pros exactly. by the NCAA rules, which are nuts. And they're pros because they get $65 a week for room and board, which is crazy. That's it? Yeah. That's all they get in junior A hockey. Yeah, but and it's really not much different than than uh, USHL, where they get yeah. free ability yeah. you know, and, and, and food. So it's just something that uh, is categorized incorrectly as far as I'm concerned. David Ortiz, uh, you know, he stopped here for a few years, but it wasn't exactly as... Uh, uh, the prime of his career. They celebrated him like we were an old alumni, but uh, what, what were your thoughts to David Ortiz watching him one more time? Let me just say this. Cashman almost lost his job because he didn't sign Ortiz. When, when, Ortiz wasn't a great player at that time. I'm just telling you. Who told Cashman to sign Ortiz? I called George. He don't oh. believe it. So help me. I says, this guy be worth a look at. Or well, you should have told the twins that. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you tell Jerry Ryan? The day, I, they, the day they put the ass statue up, Cashman was there. What statue? Steinberg. My statue. Oh, oh your statue. statue. Okay. And yeah. Cashman came over me. He says, you know, going to SOB, you almost cost me my job. He says, every time that Archie says a home run, I get a phone call. Because you chose them to sign Ortiz? That was a lot of phone calls. That's about 300 yeah. phone calls. Sid. Patrick, summarize his career. Oh, uh, you know what? It's, it's amazing. Uh, has an MVP ever retired? <laughs> he says he's going to retire. Yeah, he, retire. he didn't have a big series, but... Uh, he had a lot of hits. He's leading, the he's leading the major leagues in RBIs, at least when the weekend came started. Uh, he won't over he's so well, no, he's going to find a Ponce de Leon fountain of youth the at the end of the season. Here, but he did, gets a bigger contract He one did more time. tell me this spring. I had a nice talk with him, uh, and uh, that... He's not really retiring because he can't do it anymore. He just doesn't want to do what you have to do to do it anymore. He's just worn out from getting ready. When, when you look at that $20 point, million dollar yeah, check, he might say, eh, maybe I'll try a couple more more months. Yeah. <laughs> but when you hit the ball that Bucks and dove for, and, and you're watching Bucks, you go, oh, my God. You know, you're thinking triple at least. Man. And he's just jogging he's in a second. Say, he, oh, he's, yeah. he's not going to pull a muscle. He's, he's, he's hitting balls off the wall, pulling up at first base, going, good enough today, boys. Take a break. Come back. The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria, makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King, for the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. RSM, this is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka, choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to bobbyandstevesautoworld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car. $8.99. Patio furniture, we've got it all, and it's all on sale. Spas from $17.99. Huge savings on swing sets, grills, and more. Summer sale going on now at Family Leisure. Don't hold yourself back when buying a new car. How 30 minutes can have you in a new vehicle. On the Luther Nissan Kia Auto Show on CW23. Menthol makes it easier for kids to start smoking and harder to quit. Almost half of Minnesota teen smokers smoke menthol. Learn more at stillaproblem.com. 
Hey, Twins fans, get Major League laughs with two and a half men. An odometer under 15,000 miles and an up to five year, 75,000 mile warranty makes it elite. The way it does this makes it a BMW. Introducing BMW Certified Pre-Owned Elite. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. Looking for a nice, big, juicy rack of ribs, fabulous chops, huge steaks, and the buddy bowl? Then J.D. Hoyt's is the place for you. Hoyt's opened in 1983, and Mike Andrews and his partner John White have kept this Minnesota tradition at the top of the food chain. Managing owner Pat Montague gives us a tour. At J.D. Hoyt's, enjoy a relaxed atmosphere, great food, friendly service, private dining room, second to none happy hour just blocks from the new ballpark. Located at 394 in North Washington, locally owned, nationally known, Hoyt's. J.D. Hoyt Supper Club, downtown Minneapolis, nationally known, locally owned, and oh, is it good this time of year. Get in there when the getting's good. Going to a ball game or a concert. Stop by J.D. Hoyt's best in the business in downtown Minneapolis. Welcome back to the sports show. Gordy Howe uh, passed away. And, of course, uh, with Muhammad Ali we talked about last week. But Gordy Howe was someone that you knew very well. Uh, Louis played, uh, played against over the years. Who was he? Well, he was the meanest, toughest, <laughs> orniest, and kindest, nicest, <laughs> gentle person. He was all the above, huh? Half was when you played hockey, <laughs> and half was when you the game was over, and especially after he finished. He's the greatest ambassador hockey's ever had. He's as nice a person you've ever seen. In fact, his sons, later in life, had to take over his business because uh, Gordy really, you know, when you look back at the pension, you didn't make that much money in those days, oh. so the pension wasn't too high. Right. Believe it or not, he's not getting a lot of money. And, and he never did a lot of things for advertising. That wasn't around in those days, so he didn't have a lot of money. And he would sign everybody's autograph and talk to everybody that wanted to talk to him. So essentially, he wasn't making any money. And so the kids finally corralled him and says, look, we're handling everything. You want to sign something? Everything goes through us. Mm -hmm. And they finally were able to generate income for him. But he was, uh, <clears throat> he was the nicest guy in the world off the ice, and you can't believe that... A guy like that would be so mean and tough. When, when he was 48, was he still mean? And when he was Did 48, he... when he was playing in the World Hockey Association, and he's playing against the Fighting Saints, and they had Gordy Gallant, who was really yeah. tough, and Gordy Gallant was trying to take a run on one of his kids, and he got in the way, and, and you know, was going to give him a shot, and Gallant goes back to the bench, and next shift when the, <laughs> Marty's coming out, he says, Marty, when your dad dies, I'm going to kill you guys. Or when he retires, <laughs> when he quits, I'm going to kill you guys. <laughs> Was he better than Gretzky? Well, they're two different, different. players, different. completely different. They're, you know, Gordy was a more complete player. Gretzky was more offensive. They were as, as good as you can be, and they're from different eras, so you really can't say, this guy's great here, this guy's great here. You, you got Orr, you got Gretzky, you got Howe, and Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux, 6'5", did... Everything after the Canada Cup of '87, he did everything that Gretzky could do. One thing I can remember, I spent a lot of time with the North Stars, and covered hockey a lot in those days. <laughs> if you verify that, yeah, but what are you laughing about? Was go I ahead. at the North Stars? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. What's the story? And he was the nicest guy. He'd sit there after a game. You yeah. go interview him. And he, are you guys all done? You got everything you need? I mean, unlike a lot of other guys. Yeah, what allowed him to play so long? <laughs> well, I guess you'd say, you know, you talk about time and space today. He got all the space that he wanted. <laughs> we were having, we used to play 12 exhibition games in those days, and we were having a 12th game of the year, and so you'd have to sit out to. The last game of the year of training camp, Wayne Conley, our leading goal scorer, and myself were taking it to sit out. It was our turn out. We're playing the Detroit Red Wings. We're in the third period. Howe's got the puck, and he's doing all sorts of things. Nobody's coming to check him. And Conley leans over to me and says, Louie, if I got that much room, I'd score 50 goals in the league. And it wasn't five seconds later. He gets the puck again. Hillman takes a rush at him. Gordy gives him the stick right in the throat. <laughs> 
the stretcher comes out, Hillman goes off, Gordy goes to the penalty box, and I said to Conley, that's why that's he why, gets the room. That's <laughs> why he gets his mate. My uh, Gordy Howe yeah. story it does not involve Gordy uh, uh, directly. Somehow, Mike Augustine and I ended up in Ren Blair's office at 2 o'clock in the morning drinking after a Saturday night playoff game with St. Louis when there was going to be a Sunday afternoon and Blair wouldn't let anybody leave and Parker McDonald was the fourth and Blair started pontificating on the greatest hockey players that ever lived and of course he was Bobby Orr because he discovered him and he asked Augie and I and we didn't know anything then he asked Parker McDonald Parker thinks for a minute and, and Parker said, played with yeah, Gordy, and Gordy Parker thinks for a minute and he says Oh, Gordy Howe. And Blair gets up and says, You better say Gordy Howe because you were bleeping bleep and you got 40 goals because, because you of Gordy played Howe. with him. You better say Gordy Howe. Yeah. And screaming like a lunatic that he was. It was uh, that's I, I met him with Bobby Hall a few years ago for the Herb Brooks Foundation. <laughs> and he was just a gentleman at that time. You know, the other thing that I say, though, Louie, as we go down this road, and it at least allows for conversation is, you know, we, we're in this concussion era where we're so in the effects, and you look at him and how he played the game now, you know, until he's 52, and he didn't have any ill effects till late in life. I mean, he lived a long, he, at least when I saw him six, seven years ago, he was sharp. Hey, hold it. People don't even talk about it. His first or second year in the league in, in Toronto, he gets boarded by Ted Kennedy, and he's out. He almost died. They had to put a plate in his head. They didn't know if he'd ever play again. So he really? Played with yeah. A, he played with a... Yeah. Play, yeah, he was there. lucky. They weren't sure he was going to live. Hmm. Wow. And that was early in his career. Maybe that's when he made up his mind anyway. No one was getting close. That's thick, <laughs> that thick wheel. I heard a great everybody. line, though. One of the, you know, in the WHA when Gordy was approaching 50, and it was one of the guys at that time that was a very young player in the WHA, and he said, my line when I was trying to pick up was a, a girl because he roomed with Gordy was, you want to come up to my room and meet Gordy Howe? <laughs> 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 Take a break, come back. Change Frank, same time next week. When it drives and looks like new, you'll want to treat it like new. Certified pre owned by BMW. Choose from 60 certified pre owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. You are watching CW23. Welcome back to the Sports Show. Penguins leading at this taping over San Jose in the Stanley Cup Finals. What have your thoughts been on the NHL playoffs so far? Well, Pittsburgh. Uh got the best players. They got the best player in the game in Crosby. I thought uh, Russo wrote a great column the other day about Crosby and uh, a kid by the name of Johnson who both were a chat. Sure, yeah, I just had Tom Ward on uh, last week. They, you know what else? They both played baseball there. Yeah, and uh, they developed a lot of players. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Zach Parisi, Eric Halla. Jonathan Taves. Jonathan Taves. <laughs> they... Uh, uh, Parisi, like you said, they uh, they developed him. He, he he's a great player, and I think they got better players than uh, San Jose. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's right because he's right because Pittsburgh's best players are better than San Jose's best. Who's players. the best player in the game right now, Louis? Right now, it's, uh, you, during the regular season, you might have said Ovechkin, but right now it's Gr Crosby. He had a slow start. After he got going after the first, eh, probably six weeks, then he was as good as anybody in the game again. Ones. Of the young ones, that. who do you like? Oh, who do you like among the young ones? Well, yeah, you got to love Taves. I He's so he, complete. Yeah, you got to love Taves. He, he must be a great leader, huh? He's an unbelievable leader, but, and he does oh, everything. Oh, wait, wait, right. wait, I'm sorry. It says, it says that, uh, this, is his, this is right in his wheelhouse, of course, hockey. I think in hockey, the best players on the best teams win more than any other sport. Only if they got good goaltending. Yes. They have to have at least an equal goaltending, basically, because you get in the playoffs. If you if you got bad goaltending, you're not going to win. Patrick, the great advantage of the hockey playoffs is home road doesn't mean anything. It's going to be three to two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody, you know, the, so in basketball, if the other team's better than you, you're going to lose. But in hockey, if you know, it's everybody's the same. In yeah, the playoffs. I, I was talking to somebody from in the Tampa organization about Stamkos being a free agent, and they said the problem is if you pay him too much, you got a bunch of other good players, and so 
you can't keep them all because they're good enough as they're going to demand, and if you pay him what he wants, uh, why don't the Wild take a run at him? Wild doesn't have the space for him either. But Move a he's few not gonna get, Yeah, but he's still not going to be here. He's going to go to Toronto because what, what people forget, Toronto has the space, but more than that, it's not about paying Stamkos now. If you look at everybody that's any good that played in Toronto, Sittler, Wendell Clark, guys like that, they stay in Toronto after. He'll be making over a million dollars a year after playing, I see. which doesn't matter, you know, if the if he's making the same amount of money in Toronto mm -hmm. now as in Tampa. Okay. Uh, uh, Patrick, how are these contracts going to look to Suter and Parisi as we head down into their mid-30s, do you think? Do you think they either get a win one in the next few years or... Hell, he's got his money back on him already. If yeah. he hadn't signed he got his him, money back, if yeah. he hadn't signed him, I, I think they're, you know, they got five more years. Every each team in league's got contracts like that where they got a couple players down the line they're going to have to worry about. Are free agents uh, more? Are there more free agents in hockey than other sports? Yeah, and this year the Wild are lucky. I, I, they're going to have a crack at two guys, either which they would love to have, Backus. and either one could have wild. Backus and Oposo. How about the Wild? Can you That's see what I'm talking it? about, yeah. Would you, would you, can they get both of them? No, you can't. Well, they can't get both. Let me finish. Well, okay, right, go ahead. Well, you're something. <laughs> go ahead. It's <laughs> okay, Sid. Go ahead. Are, you think the Wild will sign a free agent? Yeah, I think they will. And I think, I, I kind of think that they'll probably go for Ocposo more than Bacchus because Ocposo's younger. Yeah. And, and, and. How is he playing right now? He's, oh, he's playing terrific. He's, he's. He's a guy that could fit in very, very well with the Wilds, something they need, and a physical forward to score his goals. And he's married to the Minnesota girl, too, which yeah. are always yeah. the uh, big recruiters for well, us, right. right? Will Scott Stevens be assigned to uh, Suter pretty much? What, 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 oh, no. what do we get here? He'll be signed to uh, the young guys. Dumba. Because, yeah, well, yeah, some if, if, Dumba, Dumba, if he's still here. Yeah. Dumba's the one guy that could probably oh, trade. Sid, you've got another thought, it looks like. They're percolating. No, you... You don't need me on this show. <laughs> it looked like you wanted to say I mean, something about the wild. He, he dominates it. Uh, <laughs> Who? Yeah. You. Oh. Yeah. You just didn't notice either. Uh, do, do the wild have the money to <laughs> sign a free agent? They, it all depends how much money because they have some space. They'll probably try and create more space, but they also have to worry about some of their young guys coming up, just like Mike was talking about in uh, Tampa, where they got some young guys that's probably going to cost the Stamkos a position there. Okay, Who, who's going to cost them the most a while? The young players? Halla down the road? He just got in. No, right? no, he won't even be close to you know, a couple of the other guys. Will, will be hey, more. Do you think, let me ask, was Burns ultimately a bad trade or a good trade? Said a Gucci coil. Well, you know, Burns at the time, when you make a trade, you want to make your team better. Burns at that time wasn't playing anywhere like now, so you can't project him coming back to the wild and playing like that. He's got right now. He's got better players in, in San Jose to help him score like that. But you know, the Wild got Coil back. They got Coil. They got a first round pick. Now the th problem is they picked Phillips. Had they picked Kucherov, who came right a couple of picks after, then the Wild would have been singing, you know, all day long because yeah. you got Coil and Kucherov, seems and you wouldn't like, trade those two seems, for Burns. This point exactly. Seems like the teams here. Let more good players go in all sports than any other hmm. franchise in the, in the pro sports. I don't know about that. You, it all depends what town you're in. Free agency really makes a lot. You know, they, they were worried about losing Burns to free agency in the following year. Yeah. So they thought they had to make a trade. Take a break, come back. Wish he'd shave. If you guys could go on a free shopping spree anywhere, where would you go? I'd go to the grocery store. Pizza, ice cream. I'd go shop for clothes. You know where I'd go? I'd go to Ticket King. Ticket King! At Ticket King, you can buy great seats for the Vikings, the Wild, the Timberwolves, and of course, the Twins. We, we love the Twins! Yes, this is where I go. Vikings, Twins, Wild, Timberwolves, Gophers, Theater, and Concerts, too. For details, go to TicketKingOnline.com. Any ticket, anytime, anywhere. It's the real thing. It's Ticket King. Right, Dad? Couldn't have said it any better myself. That's, That's for right. sure.
take every step without hesitation. Anticipate your next move with certainty. Because our trusted advisors help you prepare for challenges specific to your business. Our focus is always on you, so your focus is always forward. Experience the power of being understood. RSM, Audit, Tax and Consulting for the Middle Market. You are watching CW23. Welcome back to the sports show. You told us all along Beth Getz would be the act, the AD for the Gophers. Now she's going to Connecticut as an associate AD. Yeah, Beth Getz? Yeah. She wasn't going to say you here. You knew that. And uh, you got the scoop about 10 minutes earlier than I did. So uh, <laughs> you get a lot of scoops. Okay. But uh, she, can I finish? Okay, I'm sorry. She wasn't going to stay here because she, number one, she wanted to keep Kale here in the worst way. She wanted to be involved in football. And she wanted to kill... I, I, I hear what you're saying, Louie. I agree with you 100%. Well, you even know, she might, see, she did feel like that. She got the athletic director's job. Then she would have stayed. Huh? So <laughs> she would have stayed if she was athletic director. It really had no effect on why she moved. I talked to her. When she didn't get the job, she says, Louie, I'd love to stay, but... And she told me this before the athletic director was named, by the way. She said, if I get the job, I'll stay. If I don't, I'm going. Because you don't stay as associate athletic director after you've been I the agree. athletic director. I so I am going, but she says, I won't make a lateral move. I'd love to stay here, but in the best interest of everybody, I'll be going if I don't she get the job. told me the same thing. Well, that's but different than you think. at the same time, she had to get a job before she could leave. Yeah. Well, she turned down a couple, she didn't by the way. It sounds like Coyle's going to bring in a couple of his own people, yeah, though. Yeah, he, and you, you, you would expect he wouldn't. He yeah. should and do a great job. And Beth, by the way, is going to work with she David Bendick, get, who was here, and he's a great guy. She didn't get a job, then she would have to stay here. But she wanted to be involved in football in the worst way. She didn't get any, she's getting $200,000. There's no big money. I think they'd have given her more here. Take a look at that and finish off the show for us tonight. Oh, we got 60 seconds left? That's a long thought. So, Sid, give it a shot. Give it a shot? Yeah. You are Mr. Scoop. You know everything. <laughs> yeah. You're the biggest star in this town, without a doubt. <laughs> Mike Max. Har Harvey McKay is the key. He made me. <laughs> you and Harvey McKay yep. would make a great combination. We are a good combination. But, but who dresses better, Harvey McKay or Mike? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. How was the funeral okay. yesterday how was for Wheelock? Wheelock? How was the Wheelock turnout? It was unbelievable, mind-boggling. It was, it, he's such a, he was such a beautiful man, and the, the funeral equated the kind of person he was. Uh, his wife, Kathleen, yeah. did a great job of putting it all together. And I have to tell you, everybody Thanks there ex experienced in a funeral that you will never, ever see again as far see as I can see. back in this week, everybody. The Sports Show is brought to you in part by Cambria makers of quality quartz surfaces. Ticket King. For the best price on tickets anywhere, try Ticket King. RSM. This is the power of being understood. This is RSM. BMW of Minnetonka. Choose from 60 certified pre-owned BMWs at BMW of Minnetonka. And Bobby and Steve's Auto World. Go to bobbyandstevesautoworld.com for huge savings on everything from convenience store items to everything under the hood of your car.